We have a theme for the year. It's called 2020 Vision. Throughout the year, we want people to have a clear vision, 2020 vision of who God is. And at the same time, we want people who are not part of the church to see us with 2020 vision clearly, meaning what do Christians look like if you see them clearly with 2020 vision? Part of that theme is a series called The Fruit of the Holy Spirit, which we started out last week with. Dr. Spomer shared with you the fruit of love. Now, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these Paul says, there is no law. Now, last week, Dr. Spomer shared with all of you the fruit of love, something the Holy Spirit produces in our life that goes out to others. He spoke or shared with the, the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13, where love is gentle, it's kind, it's not rude, it doesn't boast, it keeps no record of wrong, it hopes in all things, believes in all things, love never ends. And then Paul, at the very end of that chapter, says this, these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And the reason why love is the greatest is faith is a gift from God produced by the Holy Spirit. But you can't give faith away. Uh, well, you can share it, but you can't just give it to somebody. Hope is produced by the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's on the inside, but you can't just give it away. Love is different. Love is that fruit that you can just spread and you can give it away. That's why it is the greatest. Now, you can give without love. Some people will reach in their pocket and grudgingly, okay, I'll give you a dollar, okay? But you can't love without giving. Love is not love until it's given away. Well, happiness and joy are closely linked like that. You can have happiness without joy, but you can't have joy without happiness. There was a father whose son was graduating from high school, and he wanted to make a little test for him at home to see what would bring his son happiness and where his son would probably go in life. So before his son got home, he placed on the kitchen table for his son to look at was a Bible, a brand new silver dollar, and a bottle of whiskey. Hmm. And he thought, to my, he thought to himself, if my son comes home and picks up the Bible, oh, he's going to be a minister. <laughs> but if he picks up that silver dollar, he's probably going to be a businessman. And if he reaches and picks up the bottle of whiskey, oh, heaven forbid, he's going to be a boozer. Huh. So he left the door in the kitchen open. He went into the living room and he kind of could see in there the table, waited for his son. And his son comes home, goes into the kitchen and sees, you know, the Bible, the coin and the bottle of whiskey, studies them. And he reaches over and he picks up the Bible and puts it under his armpit and the father in the, in the living room is going oh but then the son went over and picked up the brand new silver dollar and put it in his pocket and then he went over to the bottle of whiskey took the cap off and took a big gulp put the cap and set it down and from the living room you could hear the father scream oh no lord my son is going to be a politician <laughs> <laughs> oh, considering the politi political scene today, <laughs> oh, 
Consider marriages today, families today, churches today, the world today. You know what is needed? More divine joy. To help us understand that, let's take a closer look at the difference between happiness and joy. When it comes to happiness, it's external. It's out there. If you asked people, interview them, say, hey, what would make you happy? You'd probably get answers like this. Well, a new car, a new home. Uh, somebody might even say a new spouse. <laughs> somebody might say new children. <laughs> Okay, but those are the things out there. You'd probably never hear somebody say to help somebody who's desperate and in need. But if you read the Bible and know God's word, you know it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So it's external. It is also based upon chance. The weather is kind of chancy. You know, it's kind of gloomy today. What's your mood when you woke up this morning compared to yesterday when the sun was shining or if it snows or if it rains? Oh, one makes you happy. The other makes you depressed. It's based upon chance. Maybe you've heard things like this. You know, you're going to have a bad day when your twin sister forgets your birthday. You know you're going to have a bad day when the boss says, don't even bother taking your coat off. <laughs> you know you're going to have a bad day when you go into the restaurant and you eat. And afterwards they say, would you like to have the senior citizen discount and you're only 42 years old? <laughs> you know you're going to have a bad day when the raisins in your cereal bowl are moving under their own power. <laughs> Or when you're desperately searching for your iPhone in your purse while you're talking on it. <laughs> <sighs> Happiness is based upon chance and it's also temporary. It is due to temporary circumstances. How temporary is the weather? How temporary are the things out there? Maybe you've experienced you bought a new car. And it smells good and makes you happy. But the minute that new smell is gone, the minute it breaks down or you have to make those payments, the happiness fades because it's so temporary. People will go from one relationship to another thinking it's all going to be different because of the happiness. But after a few days, a few weeks, a few months, that relationship kind of is no different. See, happiness is temporary, but not so with joy. Let's take a look at joy. Joy, first and foremost, is internal. Happiness, you might say, looks outward. Joy is looking inside. It's a gift from God from the inside out. When God gave to each and every one of us the gift of the Holy Spirit, okay? It is the Holy Spirit that works on the inside. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And one of the first things the Holy Spirit does is change a stone cold heart to a warm blooded heart flowing, overflowing with love. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. If love, I believe this, love is the key of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Well, what's joy? Love singing. No matter what the circumstances are. You see this maybe like in a hospital. Someone's dying, but yet they are a Christian. And a doctor who is maybe from a foreign country, 
not a Christian writes in the chart inappropriately, full of joy, though dying. How can that be? That's a miracle. Why? Because that divine joy comes from the work of the Holy Spirit on the inside, no matter what is on the outside. First and foremost, it's internal. Listen to these words from King David. You have put, referring to God, you have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and their wine abound. The external, I have more joy in my heart even though they have all the wine and all the grain. And when the wine and the grain is gone, what do they have? Nothing. But I still have joy. That's why Peter says this. Gold is valuable. And we all know you have to refine gold. Okay, well, what's more valuable than gold? Your faith. And it will be refined by God. Why? Because the outcome of that through the trials. That's why James says, consider it. Listen to these words. Pure joy when you face trials. Why? Because the outcome of that is your faith will be strengthened. It'll be purified. And it will lead for you to praise and honor God for what he has done on the inside. Amen. Number two. It is based upon Christ. It is based upon Christ. Let me tell you, happiness looks to the world. Joy looks to the creator of the world. Happiness looks at the problems. <laughs> you know what joy does? Looks at the problem solver. <laughs> Listen to these words. This is the big picture. This gives us the proper understanding. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, in glory, and in honor by, excuse me, at the re revelation of, of Jesus Christ. You see, faith looks to the world. Hope is a lens, a pair of glasses that gives us 2020 vision of Christ. That's the joy. And when we see Christ clearly and we have that vision because of the work of the Holy Spirit, our love wants to sing, and I'm gonna call that joy. We look at Christ and we say, Lord, I lift your name on high, not mine. Happiness looks to self. Joy looks to Christ. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. Did you hear that? That you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save me. You. Came from heaven to earth to show me the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, the grave to the sky, Lord. I lift your name on high. Love embraces those words. But you know what joy does? It wants to sing them. Have you ever sung those words? Yeah. yeah. Where does that come from? Now you know why the Bible says, make music in your hearts. Now you know why Christians throughout the world are known as those who sing. Why? Because they have divine joy in their heart. And that joy is eternal. It's not temporary. Why? Because it's based upon grace. Now the Greek root word for grace and the Greek root word for joy are the same word. Isn't that interesting? That means they come together. Is due to eternal grace. God is the same yesterday, today, today, and tomorrow. His love is eternal. 
Christ is eternal. The Holy Spirit is eternal. And the work that he has begun inside of you is eternal. It'll go on forever. Listen to these words. Considering this salvation, the prophets wrote about it who prophesied about grace that was to be yours. Search and inquired carefully. The scriptures were written so we would have a clear picture of Christ and the grace that he showers upon. Grace that changes you from the inside out. Now, a good definition of grace, maybe you've heard this before, is unmerited favor. Let me have, give you, if I, if I may, a better definition. Unmerited power. The power of the Holy Spirit. It is by grace, through faith you are saved. What does the Holy Spirit do? He changes you from the inside out and gives you faith. And produces what in the series we're talking about, fruit. And a Christian is somebody who produces fruit. Because they have been changed in their life and now they have this divine joy that wants to serve not be served see happiness wants to be served but you know what joy does it's want, it wants to serve let me put it in a way that you might understand there was a woman that because of many different circumstances Married a man she thought made her happy. And after several years, she realized he wasn't a very nice man and didn't treat her very good. And one day he walked up and handed her a piece of paper with 10 things that he demanded that she do for him. Well, she resented him for that and didn't do it. After 20 years in a terrible marriage, he died. Three years later, after being a widow, she met another man. A man who seemed to love her like she never knew before. And after 10 years of marriage, married to a man who just loves her, she was digging through some drawers, cleaning them out, and she found that list that her first husband gave her. 10 things he demanded of her. And she started going through them through them and checking mentally. Well, I do that. I do that. I do that. I do that. And she went through all 10 and she realized she does all 10 of them willingly and joyfully. Why? She thought. And then she realized because of love, he loves me and respects me as a daughter of the heavenly father. And the power of love in that marriage changed her from wanting, you might say, to be served, but to serve. That's the power that's in with each and every one of us. We love because he first loved us. And the key to the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. But love singing <laughs> is joy i got a question for you this morning you know in many places in our world it's illegal to be a christian in fact if you're caught being a christian in some countries you will be persecuted and you may even be imprisoned now i want you to imagine just for a moment here in America, here in Broken Arrow, let's say it was illegal to be a Christian. How many of you sitting here this morning have enough evidence against you? How many of you sitting here this morning would be put in prison or persecuted? Is there enough evidence? Would, would the world look at you and say, oh, the love is unreal right there. Guilty. Hmm? Oh, the joy. Oh, 
The joy that man expresses, he is so guilty. Convict him. Let's put him in prison. Guilty as charged. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Listen to the words of Jesus. People ask him, Lord, how will we know who your disciples are? How will we know if somebody's truly following you? Let me paraphrase. Lord, how will we know who's truly a Christian? How are we going to know, Lord? Now, does Jesus answer this way? Well, you'll know them by what they wear. No. Oh, you're going to know them by what they confess. No. Nope. You know what Jesus says? You will know my disciples. You'll know true Christians by their fruit. Singular. Which incorporates love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there are no law. This is such an exciting series. I wrote a few things down just to help distinguish between happiness and true divine joy. Happiness can be found in doing things wrong. Happiness can be found in sinning. Think about this. Have you met a pessimist? You know what makes a pessimist happy? When they finally convince you there's nothing in the world to be happy over. But they're happy. <laughs> there are people who find happiness in drugs, but it's short term. It's temporary. In alcohol. In money. In things. You see, happiness doesn't care if it's right or wrong. Joy is found only in doing what is right. Happiness is fulfilling desires. Joy is found in limiting your desires. Happiness is getting what we want. Joy is letting go of what we do not need. Amen. Happiness pursues the world. Joy pursues a divine purpose in the world. Happiness is an emotion. Joy is an attitude of a changed heart. Happiness does not bring joy, but joy always brings happiness. Happiness is a taste in life. Joy is a delicious fruit of the Holy Spirit in life. Happiness listens to the world and the flesh. Joy listens to the Holy Spirit. Happiness looks to self. Joy looks to God. Happiness is temporary. Joy is eternal. Happiness has moments in life. Joy is a way of life. Happiness looks to the world and the things. Joy is a lens in which we see the world through with 2020 vision. Not only the world, but God and others with 2020 vision.